Hello and welcome to another review of another GM RS radio. This one was sent to me by Radioddity and it's the Baofeng UV 5G Pro. And I hate to say it, but they're forcing me to throw a lot of my prejudices about these import radios aside. They're getting better and better every year. This is strictly GM RS FRS whereas the TID radio is handband and the GMRS. My TYT is strictly handband and my old Alinko standby here which is like my bar uh, is strictly ham. This thing is a real antique. This belonged to my father but I kind of use it as a baseline radio. After the scathing review that I gave the UV5RX3, which is a tri-bander, I'm surprised they sent me another Baofeng to do a review on. I was very happy to see that they did away with that stupid looking sheet metal piece that they had screwed on the front as an afterthought, which actually drew blood on me when I did the review. It had sharp edges on it. And they have put together a nice little integrated package here. It's got a decent looking two-line display, alphanumeric. Uh, you can change the color of the backlight, it will. Like all of these radios, it's got a flashlight and like its cousin over here, the TID radio, it has that absolutely moronic alarm feature where if you push a certain button it transmits alarm tones and flashes the LED on the top. I don't see how they approve these radios. This does have FCC type acceptance also, I did check. That alarm feature is absolutely worthless, useless, stupid. It just clogs up a channel with noise. Nobody's going to know where the problem is or how to find you. It's not like this is transmitting a GPS position at the same time. It's just transmitting noise. And by the time they get a crew together to try to zero in on you with directional antennas, your battery will be dead by the time they round up people to do that. It's just a stupid, useless feature. The radio comes with a charging stand, which is strictly AC operated. You have to have AC available to plug this thing in. It comes with the antenna, comes with a belt clip, comes with an 1800 milliamp hour uh, battery. And being the curious sort, I had to know what was inside of this thing. It was so light. That has got to be the cheesiest AC line cord I have ever seen. I don't know what's that, like 26 gauge wire coming out of there? Unbelievable. Um, spared no expense. But it works. This will operate on 120 or 240 volts. But man oh man, did they cut corners on this guy. So we'll get this put back together. Comes with this little earphone microphone thing which other reviewers have called absolutely stupid and I have to agree with them. The quality of this thing is terrible. It sounds like you're listening inside of a shoebox. And it has this little piece of foam rubber to put. You're never going to get this over the earpiece. It's already torn and it hasn't even been installed yet. And that little tiny wire will probably last three uses before it's broken. But it's got decent receive audio. Plenty, you know, plenty loud, plenty clear. The transmit audio is very good. It is spectrally clear. Now I've done been doing my tests with a couple of units. I've got an HP 8924C here and I just finished doing si uh, signal to noise testing. And I've been comparing it over here with my 8594, kind of a cross check, a sanity to make sure everything's working well. And I've tested the output level using this little liter watt meter and while this is not laboratory grade, it has been, again, cross-checked using this spectrum analyzer 
and that spectrum analyzer so I'm confident that I'm within you know a tenth or two of a watt of where it should be all three of these radios put out the advertised five watts some of the advantages the TYT came with a programming cable the Baofeng does not come with a programming cable it does come preloaded with all of the GMRS frequencies in there if you need to change PL tones or uh, repeater offsets etc you can do that from the keypad the instructions are here in the manual but it does not come with a programming cable and there's no provision to charge this radio unless you buy another charger uh, aftermarket charger there's no way to charge this from 12 volts the TID radio on the other hand will you can charge directly into the bottom of the battery with a USB-C or you can use the USB-C into the stand and feed it you know from any uh, 5 volt supply most cars today have a USB outlet in the car and if not you can plug something into the cigarette lighter and plug your USB cable into it you can charge the radio in the car the TYT has a barrel jack connector on the back and it is supplying 10 volts the way they provided their wall wart is 10 volts but I have tested this the chip that's in there will handle uh, 18 volts so I tested it at 12 volts you can plug a barrel connector and those cables you know with a cigarette lighter adapter you can get them with the barrel jack on the other end you can plug this thing in to uh, 12 volts and it charges and I did a test on the FETs that are inside it raises their temperature about 10 degrees to about 90 C but they're rated for 125 C so you're safe charging this thing from 12 volts and this old timer of course is NICADS I do have a double A pack for the back of it but you know that one's as far as we're not going to worry about that these two you know there's capability of 12 volt charging this one you have to buy a separate adapter to do to 12 volt charging this guy is programmable the TID radio is uh, chargeable or excuse me programmable via USB-C this one's programmable via a cable that you supply when you buy the radio and it includes the software on a thumb drive uh, some of the specs, well I said they all meet 5 watt output. Um, I did some uh, signal to noise tests and the results were kind of surprising. My old Delinco here gives us 12 dB Synad at 0.14 microvolts and we kind of figured that out during the last review when I reviewed the TID radio even though we only did the test by air the conclusion I'd come up to at that point was that it was around 0.15 microvolts for, for a reasonable copy. Uh, the Alenco, again the old Alenco 0.14 microvolts is what it measured. I actually hooked everything up, went to the trouble of digging out cables and connected it here to this unit. This is a uh, communications mobile test set analyzer and uh, we went ahead and hooked everything up minus 124 dBm 0.14 microvolts for 12 dB the TYT was identical 124 minus 124 0.14 microvolts the TID radio actually fared the worst uh, at 123 dBm minus 123 dBm which is 0.16 microvolts for 12 dB now the difference between this and this is almost insignificant but the Baofeng was a minus 125 dBm for 12 dB. Now none of these, or most of these, like the Baofeng, they say less than 0.2 microvolts. They give no reference to what that measured against. The TID did say 0.25 for 12 dB. Um, the TID radio actually beat that handily. It was actually better than the spec. It's 0.16 microvolts for 12 dB. So it was better than its published spec. 
and the TYT, like the Baofeng, just says less than 0.2 microvolts. It doesn't give you any references to what the 0.2 microvolts is against. But it works out that they'll all do a reasonably good job. I carried this thing around for a few days and you know, stuck it on my belt for my morning hike and captured a bunch of activity. It's been uh, The more I carry these radios, the more activity I'm hearing on GMRS. Both of these two radios come pre-programmed with the GMRS frequencies in them. This one, however, I converted over. I went through, the, you saw the process where I went through the menu and I converted it over to be dual operation, both ham and GMRS. That wipes out the GMRS frequencies, but I've reprogrammed them in using the USB-C cable. This one, even though you don't get a cable, is ready to go out of the box. You don't have to worry about the ham bands because it doesn't do ham band, which is probably fine for people looking for, you know, way you keep track of the kids in the campground or if you're out uh, four-wheeling with your buddies in the woods or what have you this radio will do you just fine uh, my general feeling about the thing is it's a solid little radio it's okay uh, for the price of uh, I think you can buy these in pairs. If you buy a two-pack of these, it's forty-five dollars, so twenty-two fifty a piece with the battery and the charger. So you know, at that price, who cares if the kids drop it in the swamp? You can buy another one. Uh, Sixteen hundred milliamp hour battery. Um, the heck was this one? Was this a higher rating? I forget now. I've done so many of these sets. Even forgetting how to keep the battery off of them because again I've got so many different ones. Okay, the latch is down here. This pack, this is a 2500 milliamp hour on the TID system on the TID radio, TID H3. So it has a lot more battery capacity and uh, will last. The battery is going to last longer, of course. Full color display. Uh, this one's a monochrome display, black and white. Uh, LED backlight with the colors you can change. And this one full color display. And you can have either a single line of information or you can put dual line information with your alphanumeric display. I think if I had to buy a strictly GMRS radio, I would probably lean towards this guy. Now, I'd like to test the Baofeng uh, U5G Plus, which is a much bigger radio and comes with a 2500 milliamp hour battery. I like a radio that's a little bit bigger in my hand. I can remember back in Thailand, some of the girls back in Thailand back in the uh, late 80s, we're walking around with cell phones that weren't much bigger than this little case here and I remember thinking at the time that's kinda of silly. A there's no battery and B if you drop the thing you're gonna lose it. But uh, that's personal preference. I like you know I like the heft of this TYT and my Alinko. They're bigger radios but absolutely nothing wrong with either one of these sets and I hate to say it. <laughs> I really do. Uh, these import sets, the way they undercut the prices with uh, subsid, uh, you know, government subsidization, subsidization, easy for me to say. They're government subsidized, so they keep this the manufacturing price low, and the U.S. subsidizes the shipping. We're cutting our own throats. Never mind putting people like Linko and Icom and Kenwood and Yesu out of business. The guys that are playing on a level playing field. These guys aren't. But I do have to grudgingly say not a bad little radio for the price. How long it's gonna last? I don't know, you get what you pay for typically, but so far all three of these have proven to be uh, oh, the display timed out on this guy. Uh, all three of these have shown to be pretty reliable so far. But no 12 volt charging, no programming cable, 
probably the two downsides to that. These are comparably priced. This one charges USB right directly. You know, you just plug a USB cable into your USB outlet in the car and directly into the radio and you can charge it in the car or any place you've got USB. This guy, you've got to have 115 or 120 volts AC and plug it in unless you buy a different base for it. That's it, short and sweet. Uh, I hope I can get these guys to send me the U5 or UV 5G Plus. Uh, I'd like to get my hands on that. It comes with two antennas. Oh, I forgot to mention, this radio, like both of these other ones, does aircraft band reception. Uh, these two do FM radio reception and the NOAA weather radio reception. Those are kind of nice features. Uh, I always enjoy listening to the aircraft communications anytime I'm near an airport. I used to go to a lot of air shows it's great to have a, an airband receiver with you at the air show or if you live near a busy airport and you've got a few minutes to kill listening to air traffic control bring, bring the planes in especially in the busy part of the day when there's a lot of aircraft coming in it's interesting to listen to so aircraft band reception FM radio reception uh, NOAA weather radio reception and of course the GMRS function and ham radio function along this one. Okay, I guess that's going to wrap it up. Uh, if you have one of these in mind, bear in mind for the same price, I think I would go with the uh, TID Radio H3. But that's your preference. It's an inexpensive radio. It's simple to operate. You can give it to the kids and let them run around with it. Uh, oh, and this uses Kenwood accessories. All three of these use Kenwood accessories. This guy uses ICOM accessories. Okay, that's it. Hope somebody found some of this information helpful. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Stay well. We'll see you soon.